Hey guys, so I'd like to talk about uh, using lead wire for uh, increasing your cockpit uh, detail. Uh, for kits that you are building and you think you, that your cockpit does not have enough detail like the one I am building right now, this is the Revell F4G uh, Wild Weasel Phantom. Um, I got it at Hobby Lobby for 50 some dollars. Well, it was originally for $50, but I got it for like $32, as you know, in my last video. And it is a skill level 3, but the details it comes with for the ejection seats and for the whole cockpit tub itself uh, in the kit are very plain. It doesn't have a whole lot of detail. As you can see here, I've been, I have been adding my own detail to the ejection seats and will be adding detail to the uh, cockpit tub later on. And f the main thing I'm going to talk about is using lead wire for wiring for hydraulic pipes and anything like that uh, for your it could be for anything it could be for your ejection seats it could be for the whole cockpit tub it could be for wiring in wheel wells uh, of your aircraft that you are building and it could be any uh, wiring for any aircraft it really doesn't matter as long as you find a need for it and use for it, it really works great. Uh, so this is the whole thing of lead wire that I got on on website. Uh, it was at BassProShops.com. I did have to order. I did have to order it, uh, and it took I think four or five days to get here, something like that. I ha uh, luckily enough, I ordered it over the week, so uh, I didn't have to wait for the whole weekend. Uh, to get here so this set originally this I got this at Bass Pro Shops it arrived here like I said after five days and it does come with six sets of your wiring as you see and they're all different thickness so it's really uh, useful for that and I do find lead wire to be much easier than like uh, alum any other wire like aluminum uh, or steel wire wires just because they're too hard they're extremely difficult to bend and if you do bend it uh, after you got it on your kit it is really annoying to uh, get it straight again I mean you can get it straight but I find it really difficult uh, that's why I like to use lead wire because it bends really easily and if you want it want it to get it straight you can it's really not a big problem at all it's extremely easy to do that so let me open it up you do as you can see let me zoom in here move my cockpit tub and zoom in okay as you can see it does come with um, six different sets of wire you get uh, I'll start off with the thickest one let me see if I can get it. It's kind of hard to get them all out of the tub unless you use a toothpick or something. So you have your uh, 0.035 mil lead wire. That's the thickest it comes with uh, right here. That's, let me focus it. That's the thickest it comes with. So you have your 0.035 uh, and it is pretty thick. So you would mainly use that for like uh, thicker hydraulic pipes, um, so anything like that, especially in the wheel wells of your aircraft uh, and maybe some other larger pipes that might be in the cockpit itself. Uh, other than that, moving on to the next one, uh, your next one, I believe, after the 0 .035 is the uh, 0 .0. Uh, three zero right here uh, they do move down or up whichever way you look at it uh, by uh, point zero zero five increments so they come in really nice thicknesses and uh, even the thin ones are really nice and I will also be talking about the way they bend and the way you can form them to any surface in your cockpit or wheel well wells like I have discussed uh, and again, another one. Uh, I have used the really thin one uh, so far. Man, these are impossible to get out. Uh, and again, you have your 0 .02, uh, 0 0.025 right here. 
uh, which is just slightly thinner. I don't know if you can tell. Let me zoom in. I zoomed in and I'm trying to focus it. But it doesn't focus very well, but that's okay. Uh, but you do get your uh, your different thicknesses and the really thin one which is it goes it starts at uh, 0 0.035 and it goes down to uh, 0 0.01 I think 0 0.010 which is just 0 0.01 uh, right here and it is really thin I mean if you look at it it's I mean it is like extremely thin uh, like I don't know if you can tell see that uh, can't really tell but it is really thin and it does work very well on a whole lot of stuff they're easily cut I will cut a piece and I will show you I will actually do a thick one because it's hard to see if I work with a thin one it's hard to see the thin one on camera so I'll just cut a piece of the thick one out uh, and show you how it works how it cuts how it conforms to the surface uh, and why I like it much better than any other kind of wiring. Uh, are you going to zoom out now? All right, zoomed out. So here I have the 0 0.035 wire thickness. Uh, and you can cut it with anything. I like to use uh, wire cutters. It really works great. And as you can see, if I cut it right here, it just snips right off. And falls off the thing I mean it's so soft it's crazy uh, it is lead so you're gonna have to be careful with it don't eat it ingest it or anything like that because it's won't well, of course it's not good for you uh, in closing it you see here you have your wire it's as you can see it is not thick at all uh, I mean there are a whole lot of crinks and wrinkles in it but what I like to use is a flat surfaced area like my toothpick box over here uh, and just put it down on the surface let me zoom in uh, just you can stick it down on a surface and then you can put the box on top of it and roll it uh, it'll really straighten it out and if the box is bent I mean if the wire is bent a little bit uh, in places where it's hard to get it flat uh, just press down on the box a little more uh, you'll eventually get it to flatten out uh, there it is but I like and I like to pick it up with tweezers because it's hard uh, it, it's harder to do it with my fingers and I might bend it but now as you can see look at that like extremely straight I don't know if you can tell look at that really straight now that whole wire right there really straight and all it took was a few rolls of that toothpick box that I had uh, to get it to get it to conform like that and I'm gonna hold it with a, a reverse tweezers so I can uh, not have to use my hand with it uh, as you can see see that uh, extremely straight and you want to be careful with it you don't want to bend it you don't want to bump it or bend it otherwise you're gonna have to roll it again uh, with it with a toothpick box and for uh, right now as you can see it's straight and for that I mean if you want to conform it to irregular surfaces so uh, if you want to make like a 90 degree angle 45 degree angle you can do that it bends really easily and once you bend it uh, it doesn't bounce back or try to bounce back or just bend back even slightly one single bit uh, like other wires uh, like steel or uh, copper even copper wires do that but copper wires bend a little bit easier just like lead uh, but what you want to do is you want to take the wire and you want to hold it in your hands don't hold it too hard because you're just gonna bend it again uh, but you want to take your tweezers just regular uh, tweezers and then you want to you want to grab it right there and then just bend it to whatever desired angle you want and you want to do it carefully uh, otherwise you're just gonna bend the whole wire uh, like this and see that you have your wire you have your bent piece that you 
originally bent uh, right here and you can if you don't want it or you say you bent it uh, just a little too far right here so you want it slightly smaller you can unbend it again uh, easily just go back uh, all you have is this uh, so you can see originally where you bent it because there is just a tiny tiny uh, like a scar you could say or just a mark right there as you can see uh, hold on zoom out uh, but then all you have to do is just put it down on the on your surface again and take the toothpick box and roll right over it a few times you don't want to do it too softly or too hard because if you do it too hard you're just gonna crush the wire uh, and then you might just flatten it a little bit uh, but it's okay you you probably will be able to just roll it again and be able to conform into a round wire again but if you do it too soft you're just not gonna get anything out of it uh, so you're gonna have a hard time with it uh, so you want to do it just not too hard and not too soft so as you can see again it is flat uh, just a flat piece of wire that I have here in my hand I'm trying to show it to you right there see that it's hard to show it work with the camera and my hands as well but anyway you could see that it's just perfectly flat uh, right there uh, and again just pick it up with your uh, fingers with your index finger and your thumb and then just take a slight little piece of it Let me zoom in right there just want to take it I'm trying to zoom it in uh, and keep it focused as well but you, what you want to do is just take it grab it where you want to bend it and then just go ahead and uh, bend the wire just at, at the desired position or just the way you want it uh, and you don't want it like again said don't want to bend it with your fingers just bend it with the uh, with the tweezers that you have uh, so just work with the tweezers and not your hands and eventually you'll get it to the desired direction that you want it on and let me show you for my ejection seat, my Revell uh, F4. Hold on. Focus it again. I've been working on my Revell uh, ejection seat. Uh, it comes with zero detail. Like you know, for those of you who have done the kit, it does come with uh, zero detail on the kit. I mean, it does come with some simple... Uh, buckles that just go right down to the shoulders uh, and nothing on the on the cushion for the bottom cushion itself and it does come with just the handles the ejection handles on top which I don't like so I just I mean it comes with them I didn't like the way it came with them so I did have I did uh, clip off the little piece right there there's a second piece that went right along there because I saw all the other seats uh, and they happen to actually not have that piece. I didn't see any ejection seat with a secondary uh, bar that goes right across here. So I clipped that off and just made it nicer. But as you can see for this seat, I do have several wires running along it. Like this one, this silver one here. This is not a uh, lead wire. I did use steel wire for this. Uh, just because I didn't have the lead wire at the time, I was it was in order. So... I just had to wait so I kind of made do with what I had and I did <laughs> stick as you can see right here I did stick toothpicks right in the back here uh, because it is seen when you actually stick the ejection seat get here when you actually stick the ejection seat right there in there it is seen and you can men you can see just nasty gaps right in there uh, and I looked at the reference photos for this ejection seat and the whole cockpit tub itself and it didn't have those so I had to stick toothpicks in there uh, grind them down to make sure that they fit uh, and get rid of those gaps just massive gaps in there that I didn't like and on the other side as you can see right here uh, again this one wire here that I have it's kind of silver you could see that running down here uh, 
just right there. It's silver. I did have it. Uh, I did have to use steel for this one. So that's again, that's a steel wire. But the one that's right behind that you can see runs all the way down and right to the ejection pull right there. Or some other kind of pull. I don't know what, what that piece is exactly right there. Uh, but anyway, that is a lead wire. It is the thinnest one I have. It is the 0 0.010 lead wire um, that I just glued on there and, and actually conformed to the surface of this thing pretty nicely. Uh, I don't know if you'll be able to see that. I'd have to zoom in. I think I have it zoomed in actually the most that I can. Uh, but as you could see, it did conform to the surface quite well right in there so I did like that uh, just adding a few other details to it uh, and for the uh, if you want me to post a video on how to make the uh, Tamiya paint I mean Tamiya tape uh, belt buckles and all that in the little belt clips themselves uh, so the straps the, all the safety straps uh, I can make a video for you on how to make those and how to put those together and how to glue them onto the eject uh, to the ejection seat without making a mess. I can uh, just ask or request, uh, and I can do that. But if you don't, then it's fine. I'll just move on. Uh, but anyway, other than that, I mean, this thing is looking detailed pretty nicely, and I also I did put a uh, another pull. I don't know what that is, it's just a you know, caution, uh, some kind of pull on the seat itself and I did that, make this again out of uh, steel wiring. I don't know what thickness that was, I don't really care, I just try to make it match. Uh, it doesn't matter to me, I don't mind a whole lot. Uh, but as you can see again, uh, let me get the light over here, oh come on. Uh, Anyway, over here you can see the toothpicks right in the back of that. Uh, it gets rid of those spaces, empty spaces in there, so you can tell that uh, there's no space that's not needed in there. So that does, the toothpicks do serve a purpose, and they, I think I did a good job on it, so uh, it'll, uh, the job will show after I paint it, uh, prime it first, and then paint the whole thing. Uh, desired colors but other than that uh, this ejection seat is well to honestly say a piece of crap uh, for the kit because I have never seen an F4 Phantom that has look at that 40 what is that 45 degree angle for this uh, for the ejection pulls for the top headrest part right here uh, the all the ones I see they go down at I mean they go down a little bit but it's like not even noticeable so, uh, I mean, I glued this together, and as you can see, there's a whole gap right there that I'm going to get rid of, uh, and these ejection pulls do top the, do touch the parachute portion right here, or the whole round portion right here, uh, so I just had to jam them in there, kind of, uh, but I will be filling this up with putty so I can get rid of those nasty, uh, gaps in there, uh, but I have no idea why the heck they made it to angle like this uh, because all the other seats that I've seen were just, they were flat mostly. Uh, so yeah, uh, I'll be fixing that. I mean, there's nothing I could do about it. I'm not spending the money on uh, Eddard parts for this. Uh, I've seen the ejection seats uh, in the Eddard brand and they are pretty nice. Uh, so. Uh, I was thinking about getting them, but I'm, I don't think I'm spending the extra money on uh, those things. So I'm just going to make make uh, do with what I have. Uh, but other than that, yeah, I've showed you how to bend wire and how to uh, get it to conform to the surface that you wanted it to conform to. Uh, and like I said, I did get it off of uh, Bass Pro Shops. You're going to have to order it unless you, have, you live in a place uh, in a state where they actually have a Bass Pro Shops, uh, so you can uh, go over there and buy it. But I had to order it because I'm nowhere near a Bass Pro Shops. I think the nearest one is like 10, 12 hours away, something like that. So, but I'm not driving that, so I had to order it. Yeah, the whole kit for the six, all six of them cost me $20. Uh, 
20 US dollars. I think that comes out to, I think, 17 pounds uh, in English money, whatever, something like that, 16 or 17 pounds. But anyway, uh, hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, I will have more videos on the next progress that I make uh, for this cockpit. Uh, and just hope that you follow along with what I have and what I will be making in the future. All right. Thanks, guys. Bye.